Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. It's me, Maze MTG, back with another Deck Tech video. Uh, today's deck is for Best of 3 Traditional Standard, and it's a Best of 3 Traditional Standard Gruel deck. Found this deck list on Arena Deck Lists. It's carried at least one player to Mythic. Um, so let's see if it can carry us through some games as well. So it's a mid-rangey Gruel kind of shell. You've got your Llanowar Elves on turn 1, or as the 1 drop. Ramps you into the bigger plays, gives you extra mana available to perhaps cast a 2-drop and have something like Shock Up, or in the later game just develop. Speaking of Shock, the deck plays 2 copies of Shock, just to deal with small opposing threats, clear them out of the way. Um, not maxed out on Shocks, because we also have a Lava Coil as a 1 of, and 2 Lightning Strike for interaction with opposing creatures as well. Our 2-drop slot in terms of creatures, you've got 4 Growth Chamber Guardian, if you adapt Growth Chamber Guardian, it pulls another out of your deck to put into your hand. So it's a nice threat that gets additional value just by threatening to adapt. And then if you do get to adapt with Growth Chamber Guardian, not only does it become a 4-4, it effectively draws you a card and makes sure you have a backup creature in case anything does happen to the first Guardian. Paradise Druid, 2-drop ramp creature, has 2 power, which is important in this deck because we want our creatures to be able to attack over something like Druid of the Cowl or Incubation Druid. It having Hexproof also makes it a strong play, say, on turn 2 on the draw against a control deck, because they can't really interact with it short of something like Liliana's Triumph. In the 3-drop slot, this is where we start seeing the power cards of the deck, really. Legion Warboss, more commonly a sideboard card, but here we get to just play a full playset in the main deck. The tokens get to come down, start threatening Planeswalkers unexpectedly immediately, and if you get to start attacking with Legion Warboss, mentoring into tokens, it's a very sizable threat. Gruul Spellbreaker is the next of our three drops. 4-4 um, four, four, if you choose not to haste it off Riot. Otherwise, it's a 3-3 three, three haste trample. And as long as it's your turn, you and Gruul Spellbreaker have Hexproof. So you can't get Settle the Wreckage while Gruul Spellbreaker uh, is on the battlefield and you're attacking. In addition, it has a fun interaction with the 4-mana Chandra, where if there's no other Planeswalkers on the battlefield, one damage gets dealt to Chandra, because you have Hexproof, Chandra has to keep damaging herself until she leaves the battlefield. The last three drop the deck is playing are three copies of Domri Anarch of Bolas. It's an anthem in that it pumps our creatures, gives them all one additional power. It can help force creatures through counter magic, especially our larger creatures, like Rekindling Phoenix, like Ripjaw Raptor that we'll be coming to in a moment. And it's minus two acts as functional removal a lot of the time, because typically our creatures are going to be larger than the creatures that are played by other decks outside of the mirror. So very versatile card, three mana planeswalkers, always good. It's nice to see Domri finding a home in this deck. The last cards we're going to come on to in the main deck at least are the big threats, four, five mana plays, the top of our curve, and there's some nice ones. So two rekindling phoenix, almost unkillable outside of something like Raska's Contempt, Lava Coil, something to exile the phoenix. Throughout the whole standard format that Rivals has been legal, I have not been happy to see a Rekindling Phoenix come down on the opponent's side of the table, so it'll be nice to be able to cast some Phoenixes of my own with this deck. Ribjaw Raptors are three of, four five for four, when it's dealt damage you get to draw a card, it's just a good rate on the body, and opponents can't really interact with it without you accruing value unless it's a clean kill, and I mean dies to removal has never really been a reason not to play a creature. The five mana slot, there's six threats in it, we have four Skarg and Hellkite. Typically, you're going to want to play it with the plus one plus one counter to have access to the pinging ability, but the threat of a 4 4 haste flying creature does allow you to close games out of nowhere. It's very flexible in terms of a curved, curved topper, in terms of a finisher. While some of the other decks we've looked at, like Fabrizio Anteri's Bant Ram deck, was playing Nissa as a 4 of, this deck is just playing Nissa as a 2 of. There's not a lot we can do with the ramp from Nissa save feed it into Skarg and Helkai activations, perhaps um, adapt Growth Chamber Guardians more readily. What this is in this deck for is the ability to convert your lands into additional threats and pressure your opponent with those 3-3 Vigilant lands as well. So she's potent in that regard, but it's why she's not a full playset here. We can't really leverage the ramp, but she is still a powerful 5-mana Planeswalker in her own right, actor turning your lands into creatures, in a similar manner to Nissa's of the past, like Nissa World Waker. The mana base is pretty straightforward, you've got 15 basic lands, split 7-8 between mountain and forest, and then your 4 check, 4 shock land mana base. No surprises there. That's your 60, it's fast, it's brutal, I'm looking forward to getting to grips with it in some games. Because this is a best of 3 traditional standard deck, we do have a sideboard. 
We've got two copies of Silent Gravestone, so stops cards and graveyards from being the target of spells or abilities, so perhaps a hedge there against the Rona combo decks. In addition, you can sacrifice it to exile graveyards if you're playing against something like Phoenix. Speaking of Phoenix, you've got three more Lava Coils in the sideboard, so these can come in to deal with opposing Rekindling Phoenix, opposing Arclight Phoenix, uh, anything you might need for damage to clear from the battlefield. Um, it's a powerful card there. Two Sorcerer Spyglass offers a lot of flexibility in dealing with Planeswalkers specifically, um, just getting some information from your opponent's hand. Things like Esper, things like Jeskai, these Planeswalker decks, Sorcerer Spyglass is a powerful tool to kind of pinpoint what you need to stop and get to do so. Thrashing Brontodon is a 3 4, lets you outsize decks like Mono White, lets you have a threat to destroy Conclave Tribunal. You can bring it in against decks like Esper Planeswalkers or Esper Control, but you can threaten to destroy Surge Rouse Canters as well. I've already extolled the virtues of Rekindling Phoenix in the main deck, and there's a third copy of the Unkillable Burb in the sideboard. And then the remains of the sideboard lets us go a bit bigger with the deck, uh, converting to more of a Planeswalkery package. You have two Sarkhan the Masterless and two Vivian Reed. Vivian Reed, if you played the Soltai decks, the Golgari decks in the previous format, the power of Vivian Reed should be apparent to you. A minus three is a lot of utility in killing things like opposing Krasis, um, and then incidentally sometimes gets to kill enchantments. You won't ever get to kill a uh, Immortal Sun with the minus three, because obviously you won't be able to activate the ability, however. But being able to dig for additional threats, and then threatening the emblem where your board becomes unkillable, makes Vivian Reed a must answer Planeswalker. Coming back to Sarkhan, he comes in, immediately deploys a 4 4 Red Dragon, which is a fine rate for 5 mana anyway. And if he survives on the board, because we have other Planeswalkers like Domri, like Vivian Reed, like Nyssa, we can turn into a more Super Frenzy package, and turning those into dragons as well allows you to attack for a lot of damage in the air very quickly. Also allows you to play around effects like Wrath, because the Planeswalkers are not going to be creatures on your turn. So that's the standard Gruul deck. What do you think to the deck? Would you make any changes? Is there anything you like about the deck, anything you don't like? Let me know in the comments below if there is. But otherwise, what we're going to do now is take this deck into a few games, see how it plays. Hopefully, it's as good as it looks. Okay, so we found our first potential victim for uh, the Gruul midrange deck, so let's get down into the first game. Okay, so we are on the draw. Our opponent's choosing whether to keep or not. This hand's kind of awkward. Um, opponent did multi six in the meantime. So we don't have any lands that come into play untapped. This hand's currently looking like turn two land or our elves, turn three something. But those lands in the deck, I think we can still keep it. If we just draw, say, stomping ground, mountain, forest, we're in great shape. Opponent's also multi five. Not that that should inform our decisions, but it makes me feel a little bit better at least. But let's see what happens. Okay, so we draw Paradise Druid. It doesn't really do much. If opponent is mono white and they don't play anything on turn one or two, though, I'm fine with that. So this is where we would like to draw a land. Of course, we draw the forest now. Uh, opponent's stuck on two mana, so I mean, what are our options? We can either play a Spellbreaker and get in for one. Or we can develop out a bit further, play Growth Chamber Guardian and Paradise Druid, and I think we'll do that. Because this also potentially allows us to cast Nissa next turn. Although we only do have one forest. Okay, so opponent's Ors of Colors and has History of Banalia here. So we will what? I think we're just going to attack with Growth Chamber Guardian and then just make a Hellkite with a counter. Because if opponent decides to... Well, actually, we'll attack with both. Because we can still cast Hellkite. And I'm quite happy to trade Druid for a Knight, I think. Yep, this is fine. And then we do get to just deploy Hellkite with a counter. Um, in these color combination, I'm kind of concerned about Kaya's Wrath, potentially. But, okay, Mortify on the Dragon, sure. We untap. Um, so how much mana do we have here? Five. Five mana. So if we Nissa untap a forest, we don't have enough to threaten the adapt. But if we do adapt, we just get to play out the Guardian. So actually, we're still fine to get in with Guardian here. Yeah. Dink our opponent for two. Um, do we play Nissa? Or do we play Phoenix? The lands have haste. 
as do our spell breakers. I think we just run Phoenix out here. When History of Benalia goes off, we're just going to take four off this knife. I don't want to uh, block with Phoenix and risk our opponent having something like a sweeper for it. Second History is good. Yep, yeah, no block. Oh. No attack still. Okay, so we've got spell breakers, we've got shocks. This could be the turn when we play Nissa, to be fair. Um, but if we play Nissa, we still don't get to really attack, is the thing. And I like attacking. I'm very much in the market for attacking. Guess if the opponent double blocks, we can... Yeah, I think we just play it safe again. Attack with these creatures. We'll see what happens. Opponent double blocks, just single blocks the Guardian. We'll adapt. Yes, please. So the fact opponent's willing to do this now does make me suspicious that they have something. I don't know what something could be. Like, if they have a Wrath, that's completely fine, because all our follow-ups have haste. Um, maybe they just didn't want to take two, potentially four. And if the opponent does just have a Wrath, like, Rekindling Phoenix will still come back in off the egg. A third history. Wow, okay. Um, this is a lot of history of Benalias. Coming in with a 2-2 Knight. Not going to block, I don't think. Mm. Although if we do block, we could do what? Play Nissa, attack, shock. I think we do take this trade here, actually. I think we do take that trade. Then what we do is we make Nissa. What we then do is untap a rootbound crag. So next we just attack with everything. And then if opponent goes to the double block, we can just shock down one of the knights. And if opponent lets eleven through, we can just shock their face. So after a slow start, I think we got there. Although opponent did just make two two knights. For the majority of the game. So, okay. Shock down one of the knights. Take the kill. Opponents at four. I imagine their face will be exploding very shortly. Yep, there's some triggers. You have a 4-3, a Vigilant Knight. Knight of Malice, sure. The Johnny's Pride Mate. And opponent explodes. So, that was a pretty reasonable game. Okay, so we're back for another game with Gruul Midrange. Um, this is an interesting hand. It doesn't have any early drop creatures, but it does have three lands, two domries, and some fat. I do like this hand. Hopefully we draw something to make it all come together. Something like a, um, Growth Chamber Guardian. Maybe a Lanowar Elf would be okay. But has an Elf of their own. Lightning Strike is acceptable. At least gives us a two mana play. I prefer if our two mana play would be able to set up to protect Domri. Vivian, that's interesting. So this is banned mid range, presumably. So, so opponent, I think, oh, given that, where's Vivian put the card? Oh, Vivian plus. All right, we'll just kill the elf. We'll bolt the bird and let opponent untap. We'll bolt the bird and let our opponent untap. They did mulligan, I think. So it's probably prudent to do so. The opponent doesn't mind us, though. They do have a third land. Ooh, I like Phoenix. Uh, if the opponent has a flash creature, they could get to pressure Domri here. But we have enough Domri's that I want a Domri on the board. Sure, we'll pass. So it looks like the opponent doesn't have anything they can flash in there. So we now get to play our choice of Raptor or Phoenix. This is okay. Not the best thing that's ever happened to anyone. Um, not sure why opponent wouldn't have flashed that in at some point. But this is fine. Yep. Maybe they wanted to give it Vigilance and Reach. Who am I to say? So when does what does Vivian even do? Oh, she just keeps accruing value, sure. 
So our choice is a Ripjaw Raptor or Rekindling Phoenix. Um, hmm. I think I'm just going to play Raptor. Am I? Or removal. There's not really removal in these colors. If opponent has to ferry, it's going to be kind of awkward. But I suppose we can just use Skarg and Hellkite to finish it off afterwards. That wouldn't be the end of the world. Big to ferry. Again, not terrible for us. So opponent's looking for value with Vivian now. Interestingly, I don't really want this deputy to die... At least not until after we've used our current Domri. Because I don't really want to legend rule myself and incentivize the opponent to jump block or something. This is interesting. So we have to assume opponents hit, but they didn't shock that in, so it can't be something like a Ketra. I really don't know what they could have. Hopefully opponent's main phase is something I have to say I can stop thinking. Oh no, they didn't. You gonna come in with the one three? I'll definitely block. Okay, so we drew a growth chamber guardian. That hmm. Hmm. So I don't think opponent could really play anything that makes me regret attacking with Rib Jaw Raptor particularly. Famous last words, eh? Famous last words. Um, actually, we'll go after Vivian. I'd like to knock Vivian down to one. Maybe opponent just has, like... Oh, they have a Flash Knight of Autumn? Uh, yes. I'll certainly allow a double block here. Are you just going to have Vivian go to one? I would. It does make me want to play Domri, though, and fight the Raptor on the Knight. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'll draw a card. Um, interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm all for being mana efficient. Here my raptor. Uh, here my hellkite even. Here's, here my raptor. So I do have a raptor. So I wasn't lying. I was not lying. Vivian's going down. Yep. So, maybe we don't attack with Raptor just because we're scared of Flash God Eternal Eketra. We just, like, send Hellkite somewhere. If opponent has Oketra, though, they might main phase Oketra. Oh, shall I? Shall I is fine. Shall I is, in fact, fine. So I think we're at the point where we... No! No! Cancel! Oh, I meant to cast Domri. I meant to cast Domri. I meant to cast Domri. That's my battle cry. Whatever. We'll attack like this. It went okay. But, um... Yeah, no, I meant to cast Domri there, because then we could fight Raptor on Shall I. Um, and just be like... I guess we get to do that next turn. Roalesque. Okay, maybe we don't get to do that next turn. Shall I is a 5-6. Oh, we can still do that, actually. Um, we can still do that. We can fight, like, Phoenix on Shall I. And then... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, so we'll lead on Dom Dom Reezy. The Anarcha Bolas. Then we'll play a mountain. Domri's a right nada. Wait, so then we'll have cancel. We'll activate Hellkite first. So one, two. Oh, I can't tag my opponent. Okay, so in that case, cancel. In that case, it is right to fight first. Fight Phoenix on Shall I. Then we'll make an Ego. Oh, wow, the Ego has one power. Oh, Shall I still not dead? So actually, this made no difference. I just wasted everybody's time. Fantastic. 
However, what I wanted to happen happens. And then we get to send with some creatures. And if Deputy of Detention wants to get involved in a block, we can just have another Domri and then fight Roalesque down. Go ahead, opponent. So opponent is at two. We have an active Skarg and Hellkite. They have one card to do something. They're adapting. Oh, I guess I just want to be able to put counters somewhere when Roalesque dies. But we're just going to activate Hellkite, go face. So... Incoming Explosion? Well, here's a Phoenix. The Phoenix rises. The fire rises, and our opponent explodes. So, that was a fun game. I'm really enjoying the deck so far. Uh, if you do try the deck out, hopefully you enjoy it too. Whether or not you do or don't, or you have any improvements, any comments on the deck, please let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this content and want to watch more, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can set notifications up that will let you know when we do post new videos. Otherwise, if you want to catch some live gameplay, whether it's drafts, this deck, different decks for other formats, we do stream regularly at twitch.tv slash mazemtg. There's a link to that in the uh, description of the video as well. But otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Hope you enjoyed the video.